Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 37th episode of Smile Precure. Last time I kind of got to kind of like hang out with a foreign exchange student, become friends, you know, some mutual cultural sp spreading back back and forth, cross-pollination, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but we had a good time with that. So yeah, we're here for episode 37, so let's see what that's all about. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and support me on Patreon for early access and access to the picture in picture version. So let us begin in three, two, one, play. Reika being a good student. Being a good girl. Being a good girl student, let's just go with that. Every school should have at least one Reika. <laughs> True. Oh, a sash? <laughs> oh, okay. So this is definitely his Reika focus episode. Yes, Reika, our glorious leader. Don't, 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 don't be that way. There, there it is. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't believe it. Who better to run the school than Reika, so... She, she can't just not run. I mean, who would, if you were a student at that school, would you vote for anyone else if Reiko was a candidate? I didn't think so. You know, if I was doing my own anime, I would have, like, slight differences in the uh, the opening every time. Like, like randomly we'll have an episode where Reika just misses the bullseye of her target. You know, little, little things like that. See if anyone notices. Maybe randomly give a character a hat. A Bum, bum. Okay, I don't think that's true. I mean, yeah. It's really not that complicated to, to lead students to just, you know... Make sure they show up at school, do their work, get good grades, have fun. Like, it's not exactly being the president of a country. <laughs> really. Someone's in trouble. <laughs> How about no? Can't think of Ray Cup of glasses. Helicopter, as any student council president would have. <laughs> yes, everyone, everyone knows that evil villains, their aspiration is to be student council president. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Nice magic class. <laughs> it seems to amaze me how the translation for these device names sounds so much more complicated than the Japanese one. 
all I know is this feels like a delinquent anime <laughs> where like, you know, delinquents from another school come over to pick a fight, you know. And I think that's a the vibe they're going for. <laughs> they were not ready for today. And we just accepted it. Not when it's evil blood. Not when it's tainted blood. Not when it's a dirty Oni blood. <laughs> you know, looking at him like this, <laughs> I was... I almost get reminded of a certain game called Daiban Show by Alice Soft. <laughs> like, you just give him white hair and just... <laughs> My Jolina. This girl speaks a lot of sense. <laughs> of course, gonna get the girl a vote on that one. And what about you? There you go. Okay, he drives a hard bargain. <laughs> Rika's like, what is this nonsense? They're gonna... They're gonna spur her into action, you know? You know? Got a problem with, got a problem with manga? <laughs> So, are we just not suspicious of the, at all of the fact that they that they just jump off buildings like that? They really, they, they really don't. She told her, but there we go. I told you they would spur her into action. <laughs> what a cool shot. But like I said, do you think they would be suspicious of them just like jumping off the, the roof and the poles and stuff? Like, not typical student behavior, you know? That, what was that smile on Miyuki back there? Ooh, nice picture. <laughs> We're now her campaigning squad. That's great. I will make sure everyone is happy and healthy and successful. Rika <laughs> Dozo! I want to hear her say that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more homework. I mean, that's a valid idea. Homework has always been a kind of a stupid thing. You go to school for six hours a day to do work, and then you just bring more of it home. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, I think they like the pandering a bit better. <laughs> See, his is a little bit more of a, you know, a stretch. But I do think No Homework has some real value to it. Being kind of a buzzkill here, Reika. It's like a parent losing to the other parent that's willing to spoil their child. Even though spoiling the child is not a good thing. Yeah, we're, we're losing this battle. We need to retreat for now. Strategic retreat. Yeah. This is not going well for Reika. Yeah, it comes back to that. Oh. 
The shot from the opening. It was a great, great episode to reference that. Pew. Oh, just a great episode to reference that. You know, when I heard the water, I thought we were about to have a bath scene. We we did not. Also, make sure to get some rest, Reika. Those little chibis just look so happy. Okay, I mean, Rika is pretty good at speeches, I think, if she has time to prepare, so. What is Samawa? They are all just one trick ponies. <laughs> Always get the shrill voice whenever Majolina shows up there. Because she panders to the women specifically. She's the Hillary Clinton of this election, basically. That band is that does this say I saw too? Never showed the whole thing, but You look real nervous. I was speaking into that, jerk. Uh, it was not your turn. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> uh it's gonna be less, yeah. You know, Rake is a cute girl, she's a beauty in fact. I feel like that should give her some points in this election. Not to mention she's been the student there longer. Uh, it's getting painful to watch. Uh gonna trip over the <laughs> Or is he going to undo the Ningen humanification? Ningen Inaru, that's what it was. Human humanification. <laughs> well, Wolf Boy is still fine. <laughs> it left me. <laughs> I don't know how anyone was fooled by this for a second, honestly. It's like Team Rocket from Pokemon all over again. I mean, it's a little bit more convincing than Team Rocket, but still, similar idea. Ah, <sighs> uh, it's getting closer and closer. No, it's damaging school property. He would have been a terrible president. You know, I think Miyuki should be president and just spread her positive vibes to everyone. Ha! Scissors beats paper. I cut you up, Yayoi.
Sorry if I'm yawning a bit too much, I just got to bed late last night. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, is that the, the voting box, the ballot, the ballot box, really? I guess it, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Oof. Uh, Oof. Ooh. Hey, wow, she actually took, <laughs> taking it pretty well, but not really gaining any ground. <laughs> I will will get them to follow me. I, they just need some time to realize her path is the right one. Okay, don't don't make Rekha cry. That was that was really no. No, not not Reka. I, I think if she really just broke down and cried, that might that might just break me. They will always follow Rika. They will. We'll make them understand. Are you ready to kick some butt now, Rekha? There she is. Our beauty. Our blue-haired beauty. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Let's go, Rekha. <laughs> right in the nose. Boof. And you can really feel just the the impact and the just rage behind those blows. Like screw you for questioning my leadership. Push that button, Candy. Which are way better than sad smiles, you know. Fight, fight balloons? Okay. What context would you use fight balloons in? <laughs> I, I guess not. And you better not interrupt her this time. Also known as beauty. Shut up. Oh, 
I would love if some, you know, someone greeted me when I went to school. How can you not vote for this girl? <laughs> Guys, you better start clapping. Don't make me get him and go in there. I'll keep going. There, there we go. Don't you look silly now. <laughs> yeah, my hands are tired, but... There's a ballot box not attacking us, luckily. <laughs> Definitely, Reiko. <laughs> you were just sounded shocked. <laughs> yatta, yatta. Yeah, run away, you sore loser. Congratulations, break your beauty. Roll credits. Roll credits. Yay. Okay, that was the 37th episode of Smile Breaker. And this episode, Reka, was definitely the focus. She, uh, the, the, the very beginning of the episode showcased, like, just how much she cares about the school and the students and all that, and making it very clear to the audience, especially how suitable she is for the role of student council president. And then we get the students or, you know, the friends, the other freak here, actually suggesting or, you know, encouraging her to do so. But then she drops a bombshell that, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But, uh, yeah, because she clearly considers herself not to be the a good fit for that, you know. But that's actually a problem that a lot of people who actually are fit for something, they feel what they feel like, you know. Like, uh, well, surely there's somebody better for it than me because all they really have is their own perspective. And, you know, a lot of people out there, no matter how good they are at something, 
you know, they imagine like, well, I could, I couldn't possibly be the best at that. You know, there's so many people in the world. There's there should be people better than me, and that may or may not be true. But if the the, the fact that you are a good, for, a very good choice for it, it, it doesn't invalidate that. You know, right? And it very well is possible you are the best for it. Uh, you know, at least that's not you know busy doing something else, right? But but uh, yeah, we had a little bit of competition because the uh, the the, the the our three main bad guys decided to transform into human looking, become transfer students, and run for student council council president because they just got the idea in their head that that's you know the key to real power right there from the from the TV right, and that's what spurred Sarika into action because she can't just let these three pandering fools just take up power at the school. So yeah, that shot. You know, we had like the wind blowing, you know, the, the camera was like in the grassy area. So you can see some of the grass blowing. Rika knows will be smaller than the other three. Very delinquent looking characters standing her ground, looking angry. It was just a really, really good shot. Definitely my favorite of the episode, I would say. But we got her a sash, you know, looking good. But... But yeah, that really comes, that's really is what the, the theme of the episode comes down to is... The difference between somebody that's just pandering to what the student body thinks they want, right? Very shallow, surface level, not good for you kind of nonsense to get votes. Whereas Reika, her, her ideas are better, you know, more healthy, more productive, more positive, more long lasting impact, right? But they're, you know, boring, you know, a pain. Like that's kind of. That's, that's the problem right there. So she had a good amount of trouble just kind of getting through to people. Yeah, the problem really is that she is dealing with young people. And being young... The biggest problem with it is that you just kind of lack perspective, you know, in, in a lot of ways, right? You just kind of live in the moments. You want what you want. Even if you have an adult tell you, like, you know, it's better for your future if you do this or not do this. A lot of that can kind of go in one ear and out the other, right? And uh, it's just one of those things that's just, it's just, it's hard to get through to young people. You know, obviously some people are better than others at like being mature and being able to prioritize what's good for you rather than what feels good at the time, which is why you do have, you know, the auto students and then in the delinquents and all that, right? So, but yeah, for the most part, it's hard to get young people to swallow an unpleasant pill. And that's kind of what Reika was doing. But uh, because she was, she was giving her speeches and stuff like that, talking about what she wants from the students and what she wants to do and all that. But the biggest issue, the reason I really wasn't resonating with them, is because she uh, she fixed it, fixed it later on. But she pretty much had to add in a couple things. Like she had to add in like the um, why they should want to do it, right? You can't just say what you want them to do. You need to say why they should want to do it as well, right? And you also have to acknowledge that, they, you know, how much of a pain it is, how much anyone would not want to do it, right? Because you don't want to just kind of set yourself up as this weirdo that just likes to do these pain-in-the-ass things, right? You, you, you see, set it up make, to make it clear that you do these things because of the overall benefit that comes from them and why it would be better to have that than to not have that and that it's worth doing it on that basis. So you pretty, she pretty much had to really get it through like that and she did a much better job articulating all that near the end of the episode. But so uh, yeah, as far as like uh, the battle goes, man, there was a moment when Reiko was on the ground injured and Wolf Boy just keeps pounding away at her emotionally. You talk way too serious, no one cares and like... Rika, Rika gave this like whimper kind of sound, right? That's the best way I can describe it. And I can't, I, I can't tell you what that made me feel in that moment. Like I, it was, it like it stabbed right through my heart. Like I, more so than I could have possibly have imagined. Yeah, this is, this is, this is something that kind of happens with me, I guess. But uh, the more strong, serious, you know, a, a kind of a character kind of is, you know, the kind of character you would never imagine crying over something stupid, right? Like Miyuki or Yayoi, you know, them crying, that's just, 
you know, it's whatever, you know, they, they're the kind of characters that would do that. But Reika, not so much. So when you have an episode where Reika clearly, early in the episode, was doubting, her, doubting herself, doubting her ability to do a job like this. And then through the course of the episode, she, she has these ideals and everything that she's trying to, you know, push. She's trying to, trying to make the school a better place, trying to convince the students to, to you know, to, to get on board with that. You know, she's trying to find uh, the pathway to all this. She's working really hard, but kind of keeps getting knocked down over and over again. And just throughout, that was basically the whole episode, like Rika not catching a break. And then we just, it kind of coalesces into this, when she's literally on the ground and just almost like a, almost like the final straw being broken kind of thing. Like being, basically being hammered away until, you know, a piece finally chips off kind of thing. I guess the one me sort of metaphor to, uh, the use for it but like yeah after doing all that we finally get like this just very very sad whimper uh, you know like about the straight up cry kind of sound from Reika like it just it really hurt me I can't I'm just trying to get that point across just if they if they like kept that going because obviously you know Miyuki and the gang stood up to defend her and all that but if they instead of doing that if they spent another 30 seconds having Reika just you know just Balling, it probably it probably would have gotten me to cry. I'm not gonna lie, it, it probably would have. So I'm glad they didn't do that, cause I, it, it was it got me on the path to that. So it de it definitely would have happened. I can almost guarantee you, but luckily it, it did not. But like I said, we beat the bad guy. She got up there. She's able to give a good speech to really enter the hearts of those students, and she won the election. So you gotta you gotta love it. Also gotta love how butt hurt Wolf Boy is. But she'll be a great student council president, I have no doubt. But yeah, I think I pretty much just uh, said everything I wanted to say on this episode, so we'll end it we'll end it off here. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.